The PlayStation Portal has dropped, dare I say, the biggest update for the device since the handheld was launched. In case you missed it this week, uh, we got a cloud gaming update for PlayStation Portal, which I, I don't know which god I need to thank. Poseidon, Hermes, Jesus, Krishna. Uh, I don't know who I need to thank because I have been begging for this because ever since I owned the PlayStation Portal, it always felt like a half-baked product, right? It was good for what it was. You, you have your PlayStation 5, you can stream games to the PlayStation Portal, and you can play them on the go. So if my wife wanted to watch something on Netflix, I could just open my portal, sit next to her, and play it on the portal. Really cool concept. If I'm on the road, I can connect to my PlayStation 5 and do it there. But I feel like when you think of it from a technology perspective, it was always stuck in like, that's so 2016, right? We had it with the PlayStation 3. We had it with the PlayStation 4. This technology is not new. And since then, we've had things like Google Stadia, GeForce Now, Amazon Luna, Xbox Cloud Gaming that have kind of revolutionized the idea of gaming on the go. And when the portal came out, admittedly, I thought that's what it was going to be. I was like, man, we're going to get cloud gaming day one. Didn't happen, but hey, it happened eventually. And that's the key thing here because cloud gaming is now available on the PlayStation portal. And this is a massive day for potential PlayStation players because you don't have to buy a PlayStation 5 to play games. Now you can actually just get a PlayStation portal for like 200 bucks and be put in the PlayStation ecosystem. It's super cool. Now PlayStation is calling this a cloud streaming beta and initially it's just going to be 120 games, which feels really weird to say. Like just saying initially it's only 100, 120 games is a lot of games. Dare I say, you might not even knock those out in five years. Like if to play all 120 games, it probably would take you five to six years to play all of them from start to finish. But these are some pretty awesome titles. I mean, you got Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Ghost of Tsushima, Ratchet and Clank, along with a ton of other bangers. The streaming quality will be 1080p, 60 frames per second, which shout out to the groans I just heard in the comment section of the people being like, oh, but we need 4K, shut your mouth. Just be grateful that we got 1080p. Now, the other cool thing with the cloud streaming beta is that the PS Portal will keep its DualSense features like haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, speakers, motion sensors, and obviously the touchscreen will work in game. Plus you will get PlayStation Plus cloud storage support when using. Now, all of that's awesome. It's exactly what I wanted. You know, I wanted the ability to play games on the road without having to connect to my PlayStation 5. And it really does usher PlayStation, in my opinion, into 2024. It's like, welcome to the future PlayStation. Thank you for joining us. I, I cannot wait to see what you do next. But definitely worth noting here, this cloud streaming beta will require a subscription to PlayStation Plus Premium, which is about $18 a month, or you can save about $4 by buying the annual membership and your payment comes to about $14 a month. As far as internet requirements go, this isn't gonna be super beefy. It reminds me very much of what Google Stadia required. For 720p, you need a minimum of seven megabytes per second. And for 1080p, you need a minimum of 13 megabits per second. And the key word here is beta, right? Stadia, the death nail there where they came out and they were like, we're done, this is the final product, enjoy it folks. It wasn't great, it had its bugs, it had its flaws. A year in, that's where it was great. And if Stadia would've came out and been like, hey, it's a beta, I think we would be in a very different situation right now. Now with that, the keynote here for me is that PlayStation said it's likely to evolve. So personally, I cannot wait to see how PlayStation evolves this. You know, what new features do we get? Uh, what expansions do we get? Maybe we see the ability that like, not only do I have PlayStation Plus premium titles, but if I were to buy a brand new Sony release game, like $70 for a game, maybe I can play it on my portal via the cloud. Like when Ghost of Tsushima 2 comes out, maybe I can buy that game and stream it to my cloud. We're seeing it on other platforms and we're about to talk about another platform doing this very same thing. But like, that's where I think Sony needs to focus on evolving this. And it's weird, as someone who adopted cloud gaming extremely early, like Stadia Stan, Stadia for life. I'm an Amazon lunatic. I, I love the concept of cloud gaming and the future that it offers. When Stadia shut down, it, it genuinely felt like Cloud gaming had gotten the wind taken out of its sails. It wasn't cool anymore. It was dead on arrival. It's never going to happen. But like now that we're five years out from like the introduction of Stadia, it's just like, oh man, cloud gaming is cool again, right? GeForce Now is doing awesome stuff. Xbox is doing awesome stuff. Amazon's doing awesome stuff. And PlayStation's doing awesome stuff. 
It's like if Google would have just stuck around for maybe two more years, this would have been a completely different scenario, and maybe the adoption rate would be completely different for Stadia. The irony here, right, is there were so many people when it came to the PlayStation Portal who were like, this is a terrible device, don't buy it, uh, it's not worth the money. I was never one of those. As soon as I opened the box and I held the portal in my hand, I was like, yeah, I mean, this device is well worth the $199. The screen quality is great. Uh, being able to play the games are great. And now that you're adding cloud gaming to this, this feels like the steal of the century. I mean, we're heading into Christmas season, and I do not think I could recommend any device more than the PlayStation Portal because it is a fantastic device. And if you have someone who's a casual gamer in your life that wants to play these new PlayStation games that they've heard about, like The Last of Us and, and Spider-Man and, and Ghost of Tsushima, but they don't want to buy a $600 console to play it, now you can just buy a $200 screen and you can play it as well. Like that's huge. And again, there is an audience here and it's always been there with cloud gaming. It's like, well, I'll just use my phone. Yeah, but what happens when someone calls you during your gameplay or your battery runs out or you're in the middle of the woods and your battery runs out and there's a bear and you're like, well, shoot, I drained my battery because of cloud gaming. I bet you wish your phone was charged, right? That's the world I'm in. I'm like, man, I want to have my phone and I want to have a separate device for gaming. And, and that's what the PlayStation Portal is for me. And I got to assume... All of the elves in Santa's workshop right now are working extra hours to create more PlayStation portals for all of us. Like, there's probably a New Yorker elf somewhere in Santa's workshop coming in being like, Eyes up, boys! We got some more orders for the PlayStation portal today! But yeah, kudos to the PlayStation team, kudos to the portal team, um, and kudos to the cloud gaming team who made this all possible. Uh, anytime you take a device from being good and you turn it into great, I think that should be applauded. So a uh, round of applause to the PlayStation team, everybody who worked on this. Um, Definitely pick up a portal for yourself. I could not recommend it anymore.